difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning of the video. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians. We rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2, 15. He gets saved by the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead. The blood sacrifice atones past, present, future sins. Turn from the world to Jesus and the cross. Put your faith and trust for salvation in him. Subscribe if you're new and thumbs up. We'd love to have you join us. Taking a look at Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. 11. Something very interesting here. This is, in fact, a very devastating set of passages to all millennialists and post-millennialists. For just as sure as the world in verse 9 is, is the first advent, and verse 11 also is the first advent, but the key we're going to find out right in the middle of these two verses is the second coming of Jesus Christ that has not certainly been fulfilled as of yet. He will return to rule over his proper place. Let's look at the verses. Zechariah 9, verse 9. The Bible reads, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just, and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the fowl of an ass. So that was Jesus Christ riding in to be crucified. Yes, he came He came to save the world. Verse 10, right, right in the middle, we're going to see second advent in this verse. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and in his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Verse 11, we go back first advent. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there, is no water. So we were saved from the pit of hell. We were saved without from, from not having living waters. And it was by the blood that that covenant saved us. Amen. And so we see first Advent here after verse 10 was a little bit, was, was second Advent. And so, you know, these people that reject the premillennial approach to prophecy, the pre-tribulational viewpoint, they, you know, this is a tough passage for them to deal with. And it's a good one to point out as well. And it happens over and over again in Genesis. It's also in, Gen in the scripture, excuse me, also happens in Genesis 49 as well, where you see second advent and first advent mixed together. So verse 9, we, we saw that it's the triumphal entry of Christ at the first advent. You can see that with Matthew 21, 4 through 5. 
verse 10 won't be fulfilled until the second advent, Hosea 2.18. And then verse 10, again, we're, we're talking about the first advent. Anyway, rightly divide the word of truth. It's important to realize that certain scriptures can jump ahead and back 2,000 years because God sees the beginning from the end. God bless and have a great day.